Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we are diving into the exciting world of React Pi, a powerful library for building user interfaces in Python. In this tutorial series, we will take you from the very basics to more advanced concepts. So whether you are a beginner or have some experience with React or Python, you are in the right place. Without further delay, let's jump right in and create our first React Pi application. Let's have a look at the overview of React Pi. React Pi is a Python library inspired by ReactJS designed to simplify the process of building user interfaces using a component-based approach. It brings the power and flexibility of ReactJS to Python developers allowing them to create interactive and dynamic web applications. At its core, React Pi follows the philosophy of breaking down user interfaces into reusable components. These components are self-contained, encapsulating their own logic, state, and rendering. By composing these components together, developers can create complex user interfaces in a modular and maintainable way. Now, key components in React Pi include Number 1. Components Components are the building blocks of React Pi applications. They can be defined as either functional components or class-based components. Functional components are simpler and focused on rendering UI elements, while class-based components provide additional features like state and lifecycle methods. Number 2. Virtual Document Object Model React Pi incorporates a virtual document object model, which is a lightweight representation of the actual document object model. It allows React Pi to efficiently update and re-render only the necessary parts of the user interface, resulting in improved performance and a smoother user experience. Number 3. JSX Syntax React Pi leverages JSX JavaScript XML, a syntax extension that allows you to write HTML-like code within your Python components. This helps in expressing user interface elements, composing components, and seamlessly integrating JavaScript logic within your Python code base. Number 4. State Management React Pi provides an intuitive way to manage state within components. State represents the data that can change over time and affects how the component is rendered. By using hooks or class-based state, developers can easily handle and update component-specific data, making it straightforward to create interactive and dynamic applications. Number 5. Event Handling React Pi offers a declarative approach to handling events. Developers can bind event handlers to specific UI elements and define how the component should respond to user interactions. This simplifies the process of capturing and updating state based on user input. Point number six, routing. React Pi provides routing capabilities to handle client-side navigation within your application. You can define routes, map them to specific components, and enable dynamic rendering based on the current URL. This enables the creation of single-page applications with multiple views. With benefits like Code reusability, modularity, and performance optimization, React Pi empowers Python developers to create modern and responsive web interfaces with ease. To get started, we will need to set up our development environment. Setting up the development environment refers to the process of configuring your computer system with the necessary tools, libraries, and dependencies required to develop and run React Pi applications. This step is crucial to ensure a smooth and efficient development workflow. First, make sure you have Python installed on your system. You can download and install the latest version of Python from the official web Python website. Next is the package manager. 
choose a package manager like pip or conda to manage python packages and dependencies next we need to have a code editor uh, ide select a code editor or an integrated development environment ide such as visual studio code pycharm etc to write your react py code install the chosen editor ide on your system next we have virtual environment uh, which is optional it is recommended to set up a virtual environment to isolate your react py project's dependencies from the system wide python installation virtual environments help manage different project specific package versions and prevent conflicts next we need to have react py library install the react py library using the package manager you choose i will show you its installation on jupyter notebook google colab and vs code later in this tutorial you also need to have javascript runtime built tools and additional libraries depending on your specific project requirements you may need to install additional libraries or tools once you have completed the setup process you will have a fully configured development environment ready to create test and run react py applications it ensures that you have the necessary tools and dependencies in place to build robust and scalable web applications using react py now we will see how to install react py on jupyter notebook google colab and vs code so for installing react py in jupyter notebook you can use the following command writing exclamation mark then pip install react py and that's it react py library will be installed in your jupyter notebook once the installation completes you can import and utilize react py in your Jupyter Notebook. To install React Py in Google Colab, you can use the same steps as for Jupyter Notebook. Simply writing exclamation mark, then pip install React Py. After executing the command, React Py should be successfully installed in your Google Colab environment. And you can then import and use it in your code. Then to install React Py in VS Code, uh, you have to follow these steps. Open the integrated terminal in VS Code by navigating to View, then Terminal, or by using the Control plus single quote shortcut. In the terminal, execute this command pip install React Py. Now here you don't need to write exclamation mark before pip. Just simply write pip install react py and then press enter key. Once the installation finishes, you can import react py in your python code files within the vs code editor and start using its functionalities. Now again, remember to ensure that you have python and pip properly installed and configured on your system before attempting to install react py additionally if you are using a virtual environment make sure it is activated before installing react py now let's have a look on our first code using react py library the first line imports the necessary modules from the react py library the modules include component html and run these modules are required to create React Py components, work with HTML elements, and run the application respectively. In the second line, we will import nest asensio module, and then we will call nest asensio.apply to enable running the React Py application within the Jupyter Notebook or other asensio based environments. This step ensures proper event loop handling. Next, we will define add component decorator to define a React Py component called photo. Decorators in Python allows you to modify the behavior of a function or a class. In this case, it converts the photo function into a React Py component. 
Inside the photo function, the html.img function is called to create an html uh, image element. This function takes a dictionary of attributes as its argument. In this case, the src attribute is set to this URL to fetch a random image. The style attribute sets the width of the image to 15% and the alt attribute ALD provides alternative text for the image. Finally, the run photo function is called passing the photo component. As an argument, this function starts the React by application and renders the specified component. In summary, this code defines a React by component called photo that renders an image element img displaying a random image from this URL. The component is then run using the run function to display the image on the web page. We will run the same code in Colab. So for that, Copy the code from Jupyter Notebook and then paste it in the Colab cell and then execute the cell. Click on the link to see the output of the code. So, okay, this is the output that we will get uh, after running the code. Running the same code on VS Code. Uh, so, copy the code from Jupyter Notebook, then paste it in VS Code, and then run the cell. This is the link which will take us to our web page. Open it, and then here is the output of the code. So, that's it for our first React Pi tutorial. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and feel confident to continue exploring the world of React Pi. Stay tuned for more exciting tutorials on advanced topics. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more content and leave any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Happy coding!